If you want to write code that is safe from hackers and doesn't have memory corruption vulnerabilities, you should use a language like Rust. And before you go, I understand that not everyone likes Rust. So if you're like me or you're a C programmer, it's good that you test your code. What if I told you that one of the ways you can test your code to prevent it from being vulnerable to hackers is by screaming at it. I mean, literally just yelling at your code. Today, we're talking about fuzzing, which is the art of literally yelling bad data at your code and seeing where it falls over and then fixing those bugs. Today, we're going to have a piece of code that I wrote. We're going to find a bug in it by yelling at the code using a fuzzer. Let's get into it. I've got some code here that may seem innocent to the untrained eye, but hiding deep inside of this code base is a bug that, if exploited, could allow hackers to take over the code, which is bad for anyone that eventually wants to use this code. So we're going to go through and walk through the process of how you can use fuzzers to yell at this code to give it malformed data and eventually find the bug and then patch the bug in your program. So let's walk through what the code does. Here we do the basic socket IO stuff. We create a TCP socket. We bind it to port 1337. Eventually we listen for a client. And then when that client comes in, we accept the client into a new socket file descriptor and we receive some blob of data from that client. The, the blob that we receive is into the data buff buffer and we use the request size variable to denote how much data we're going to receive. So in this case, in the other header file, it's 10, 24 bytes. We receive that data and eventually we go forth and we parse that request, which is happening in a separate file here in request.c. Now the code is getting a little more complicated here, right? And this is where fuzzing is going to pay off a lot. You know, we could do a static code review of the code itself and try to find the bug. But a lot of the times it's hard for us to wrap our head around how the code behaves in the wild. So looking at a static code analysis like this isn't going to do it for us. We need to test it dynamically. So we have here defined a TLV structure that's a type length and eventually underneath that a value that comes in from the user and then we parse that type length value header and then do something as a function of the request that they send us here we have a magic header to make sure that we get the right type of data from the user if it's not the proper header magic then we ignore the value we just drop the request and move on with our lives and then if it is the right magic value we have to check the type of the request the user sent us if they gave us a hello, we say hello. If they say goodbye, we say goodbye. But if they send us a special message type message, we go forth and we parse that message and then take some kind of action. And then here is the parse message where we copy in their data to some buffer and eventually use that to do additional processing. So this is my server at a high level. And so let's show you guys it working. Run the server, waiting for a connection here. I will netcat to myself, so netcat localhost 1337, and then I can send it some data. So because I'm not sending it the proper magic value, right? It's going to drop the connection here, say bad magic and move on to the next connection. So I can use like echo, for example, to form a proper packet. I can say echo NE and the header was four, five, four, five. And then I can put that into the data and see if I get something else there. So we got a hello message there, but we're still not crashing the program. So this is the art of kind of making your own fuzzer where you're like writing your own known bad data into this thing, but it's kind of hard to get full code coverage. We want to make sure that we hit every possible case in this program and it's kind of hard and really painful to do that manually you should be writing code coverage tests that test every case yourself but luckily there are tools that already exist to do this for us now our fuzzing target is this request.c file right inside the request.c file we want to test the parse request function and give it just we wanted to scream at this buffer here we want to give as much data as we can to the request buffer variable and see if we can make the program fall over to find bugs that way. So there's actually a really, really cool tool called uh, libfuzzer. It's a tool by LLVM. Now, before we go and find the bug in my code, I want to talk to you guys about my new course website, Low Level Academy. I'm working on a course right now called Zero to Hero C Programmer, where I take you from having no experience in C at all to a master of the C language. And I've got a bunch of other courses coming out like network code that doesn't suck and threads, but good as well as get good at version control. If any of those are interesting to you, go check out right now at lowlevel.academy. See you guys there. All right, let's go find that bug. So libfuzzer is a fuzzing engine where essentially you're able to point the fuzzer at a target function and then the fuzzer will go through and put in bad data and try to get as much code coverage as possible and possibly find any edge cases that you weren't considering and produce a crash that, that shows you where the bugs are, right? So what we're going to do is we are going to have the lib fuzzer fuzzer compiled against our program here. I wrote actually a it's called a fuzzing harness here. And what the fuzzing harness does is it uses LLVM's lib fuzzer and it takes in the header of that function pr uh, prototype. And then we say parse requests. I'm calling my 
data parsing function from the user on data now this is an entirely separate program that i'm going to use to test to see if that function has any bad code in it let's run the uh command to compile libfuzzer so we say the you know pieces of c code that we want to compile together and we use f sanitize equals fuzzer and that puts in libfuzzer into our code and we're going to produce a fuzz binary if we can run fuzz and what's happening here is libfuzzer is going to run and try to find all the bad code in our code by by you know fuzzing it by screaming at it putting all this bad data into it and trying to get as much code coverage as possible and you can see pretty quickly uh libfuzzer is able to produce a crashing state using the libfuzzer and what it actually does is it produces a file which represents the input that it took to crash this program so let's take this and cat this let's do cat this file pump into xxd interesting so it found first of all the magic bytes that we had to do to get into the process's execution and then after that it found the magical two value the two value is the request message right because request message is the type that calls parse message that's our bad function and then from here it put in a number 40 it's 0040 i wonder why that crashes well, to test this, what we actually can do as well is we can run our server. So we'll go to yell at your code. We'll run our server. We're going to do GDB on our server. There we go. So after, after brute forcing through a couple of address already in uses, we have our, our program running. So we'll put that in the background and we'll put that into window three. And now to test our crash, what we can do is we can go to CD yell at code and we're just going to cat our crash file into netcat localhost one through three seven. So we're going to take all the data from the crashing input and send it to our server. Bada bing, there we go. And now we should have a crash happening here in uh, Pwn Debug, which is GDB. So now we can look at our stack trace and see, OK, what was the issue that we ran into? Uh, we had a crash that came from parse message line 63. OK, let's go back into our code. Line 63 is actually the return here. So something bad happened in this function. Oh, well, we can see here that, you know, the hln we are allowed to mem copy an arbitrary length into a 64 byte buffer so we can take this and now we can say if hln greater than 64 actually less than 64 then we'll just do the mem copy otherwise we don't do anything all right so we can try this and let's see if this fixes our bug and if libfuzzer is able to find any more problems go like this fuzz Ooh, it found another crash. I'm interested in what this is actually. Oh, you know what's happening here? It's because the input is being looked at as a signed value. So we have to do, uh, wow, that's really interesting actually. I didn't think this was gonna happen in this video. Uh, let's go ahead and patch that. So we'll do server request.c. Yes, yeah, so we have to make the type of this an unsigned short. Wow, that's pretty cool. That's a bug that I didn't even see in this code. Applying that, fuzz. It's going to run forever because in theory, there are no additional bugs in this program. This is a uh, libfuzzer. This is a program going that's going to take our code. It's going to try to get full coverage on it by screaming at it as loud as it can, finding all the edge cases for us. And we can take those edge cases that are produced as crash files and use them to find more bugs in our code, patch those bugs and move on. And if you think that these lines here are fast, go watch this video about how switch statements are even faster. We'll see you there.